What is the number of followers, the number of likes, the number of dislikes, the number of retweets, the number of subscribers, any of those numbers, any of those metrics, what have they got to do with the argument? Nothing, it would just be an ad hominem, but I have yet to see it from our side as anything more than an insult. Next. Why is it that you go on and fucking on about safe spaces and trigger warnings and delicate little flowers, but continue to hide behind your cartoon avatars and your childish pseudonyms, and whenever anyone calls you out on your sexist, racist, homophobic, bigoted rhetoric, you become the argument of your own scorn and are hashtag triggered, as they say. One, I do not have a webcam nor a part two. Two, I do not hide my identity from you, but I do hide my identity for other reasons. But it should not take more than a few hours for anyone to find out who I am. I'm not as much hiding as just making it not obvious. But a significant number of anti SEWs are open with their identity. Three, I don't want students to be influenced politically by me or feel uncomfortable around me. Four, it is a brand for many. Five, it makes it easier to edit. Six, video of you is just a distraction, and I don't want all girls to agree with me because I'm so fucking beautiful. Seven, it is rational to hide your identity when discussing these issues because some of you will try to ruin our lives. And everyone has the right to not fear real world consequences when discussing political issues. Some actually face threat of physical or legal harm for expressing their views. They should not be silenced for that. Hurt feelings is nothing in comparison. So, eight. Go fuck yourself! Additionally, the argument does not become more or less valid because you show your identity. It is irrelevant. I recommend listening to Nicholas Ramble on doxing. Are you willing to publicly acknowledge and admonish the massive amount of hatred, bullying, harassment, and intimidation that a lot of your fans infringe upon people? English, motherfucker! Do you speak it? And I don't mean these tiny disclaimers that you put under the description fold or flash for two seconds. Two seconds is not a flash. It's very long. Ever heard of pause? People would go mental if the text was displayed for five minutes on all videos. Seconds at the beginning of the video that you know nobody reads. Prediction. I mean a public and ongoing. We really have to do it. No Going anti-bullying stance. Or do you kind of like watching your fans go around harassing people and calling them slurs and telling them to kill themselves? You kind of like it, don't you? No, but it is not our responsibility. It isn't a reflection of us, and we have better things to do. I mean, if that's your thing, and I guess that's just what you're into, just makes you a dick. Look, feminists. Proof that millions are useless slurs. Why do you find it so hard to believe that feminists are being harassed online? Bitch, everyone gets harassed online. Of course feminists are too. They do not deserve victim privilege for it. And to prove it, I'm going to call you a bitch again. Bitch. Happy? The amount of harassment you receive depends on how well known you are and how much stupid shit you put out. Did you conflate women with feminists? I have not heard about feminists specifically being harassed, which would be expected because they are putting out controversial opinions. But I have heard the feminists claiming that women get presumably disproportionately harassed. Do you understand the key importance of reproducibility and repeatability? What is it with you guys and tautologies? In scientific research. That's simply going to Google Scholar, doing a 30 second search for keywords and pulling out the first paper you find that backs up your stance is not a particularly credible way to do research. That you have to have a much broader overview to read the material, to follow the citations through, to look at the broad brush approach to a particular problem. Yes. And I am working on doing this for all feminist and social issues worldwide. But at least one paper that backs up your stance is better than no papers whatsoever. Or a paper that refutes your stance. You do realise that you're as much of a social justice warrior as those you critique. It's just that you espouse a different form of social justice. A rather less considerate, rather less forgiving, rather less kind form of social justice. No, and I do not espouse feminism either. And when are you going to forgive me for my original sin of being a white cis male? If you identify as an egalitarian, then I'm interested in your take on the usefulness of the concept of the original position as laid out by John Rawls in his theory of justice. Irrelevant. Wash that smirk of your face. As a supporter, as a proponent <sighs> of freedom of speech, why do you want to quash academic freedom? Are you talking about Carl's petition to stop social justice indoctrination? If so, that question has already been answered. 
If you're not familiar with the concept of academic freedom, it's worth, in the UK at least, looking up the 1988 Education Reform Act and seeing what that says about the rights of academics to put across unpopular opinions. Ideas and facts, not opinions. Opinions are not place in academia. And if your opinion is representative of your side, you guys might want to stop calling people with different opinions slurs. Why are you so obsessed with Anita Sarkeesian? I'm not, but she's an influential high-profile feminist that assaults people's hobbies. 